In the last video, I ended up with this expression, and I said that this is called the dual. And this is going to be used to find the Lagrangian coefficient, in other words, alpha sub i, which is this one. And when we find this coefficient, we will use it to find the w. So to find the alpha i, we need to work out here a maximization problem. So this is, so now it has become the maximization problem. So we need to maximize that for alpha i higher or equal to zero. Now why we have this relaxed constraint here? Because in my original constraint, I have a constraint that is uh, this one. I have a constraint that is higher or equal than zero. Therefore, this constraint here on alpha i should also be higher or equal to zero. So now to solve this, we use numerical methods. And because it's uh, analytically uh, difficult, or I think it's even impossible to solve, so in such cases, what we do is that we use numerical methods. So what we basically do is that we try for different values of alpha i, and we see for which of these values, uh, which of these values would yield a maximum value for this expression. But uh, of course, we are not going to do that because this is you know, done. Uh, there are many functions uh, if you want to program that. There are many packages, many libraries to, to do that. And the reason why we did develop this expression, even if we are not going to work out this maximization problem, is that we wanted to see upon which this maximization problem de depends. And we discovered that this maximization problem depends upon the number of peers xi, xg. Okay? So, when the number of peers of training samples increases, then the, you know, the number of iterations we would need to do also increases. This is just to know uh, upon what the complexity of this maximization problem depends. So that's all. So now when we get the value of alpha i that would maximize this equation here, or this expression, we replace it in this expression of w to get the value of w, the magnitude as well as you know, the direction. So here alpha i, or y sub i is known, x sub i is known, and alpha sub i is known, and this would allow us this would allow us to compute the W. Okay? But now, our optimization problem, in our optimization problem, we want to find not only W, but also B. So now, before finding B, I want just to talk about the, what's the meaning of the, or what is the interpretation of the different values of, of alpha i. So we have three possible interpretations. Okay? So the first, possibilities is that alpha i or alpha sub i equal to zero. So in that case, I say that the corresponding training sample xi is a sorry, this is not, rather, is not is not a support vector. And I will explain in a moment what is a support vector. Okay, so what is a support vector? A support vector is simply a training sample that lies on the margin. For example, assume that you have the following um, distribution of the training samples. Say that I have only two or three positive training samples and three negative training samples, and somehow I got my margin like that. So this training sample here that lies on the margin, this positive sample that lies on the margin, and also this negative sample that lies on the margin is called a support vector. 
So this was the first case. And if alpha i is different than 0, then it means that xi, or x sub i, the corresponding training sample, is a support vector. But here I have um, another case. If alpha i is different than 0 and the value of, our, of alpha i is very high with respect to you know, compared to the mean of other values, then what I could infer is that the corresponding xi is of course a support vector, a support vector, and an outlier training sample. That's what we need to know about the interpretation of alpha i. So basically we can identify the support vectors using just the values of alpha i and this is useful to find the values of b or the value of b. So now we'll talk about how to find this value of b. And um, if you remember uh, in the beginning I said that b so this is the first rule that we set in the first video. So we said, now let me just draw here a support um, a feature space to see what I'm talking about. So this is, say that these are my positive samples and these are my negative samples. And somehow this is the margin that I got. Okay, so this is the margin. And this is the W. This is the a given W. You said that this is the W that I found by my after optimizing uh, my problem. So now, I said in a previous video that any the the dot product of this vector with any unknown point. Say that this unknown point is, for example, here. This is an unknown point. So this gives you a measure of distance from this point here to this point. A measure of distance from this point to this point and I also said that when W the magnitude of W is equal to 1 then this dot product represents exactly this distance okay this is what I said and also I said in the first video that the decision rule can be written in this form so this is W dotted with you know any sample that you want yeah, but say that this sample is z for example and if the dot product of w with z is higher or equal than c then we say that this is a positive sample positive sample otherwise x or z is a negative sample and this c is a measure of distance from the center of this feature space to the decision boundary that should be in between this margin here so if this is the d this is the width of my margin this distance here should be d by 2 and c is just a measure of distance from this center to this point here and then what i did is that i said well i can set i can uh, modify this decision rule to obtain something like that so I get here plus D, and this is higher, or plus B, rather B, this is higher or equal to 0, and the B is equal to minus C. Okay? Hazm. Hazm. Sorry for this interruption. So this is what I would say. And I said that B, the B that I'm looking for is equal to minus C. So what I will do to find the B is just to find, to look for C. Okay? And to look for C, what I need to do is to compute this distance, or to measure this distance, take, uh, get a measure 
of this distance let me call it d plus and then again I will compute uh, the measure of this distance here d minus and then c my c would be equal to d plus plus d minus and I will divide that by 2 then I get a measure of distance from here to here okay now the question is how to get d plus in d minus well to get that I need a I need to dot product the w with a point a positive point on the left margin on the right margin okay so I need to find a positive support vector which is in this case this support vector I need to find this support vector and I need to find this support negative vector this is a support vector and this is a support vector and if I dot this with W I get D plus also if I dot product W with this support vector I get D minus so now the question is how to find these support vectors I need to find a support vector that is positive and also I need to find a support vector that is negative so let me denote the support vector the positive support vector as XP so this is the positive support vector that I'm looking for and XN this is the negative support vector that I'm looking for and I can take any support vector any positive support vector would do it and also any negative support vector would do it so if you remember I said that here I said that when alpha i is equal to 0 is not equal to 0 then xi is a support vector so this gives me an indication of the support vector but now I need an indication for positive support vector okay so let me just write that, that down so alpha i if alpha i is different than zero this gives me indication this is a this means that x i is a support a support vector now I need an indication of the support vector which is done by alpha i the value of alpha i but now I also need an indication of the positive training sample or negative training sample and this is also easy I can use just the y i and if you remember we set this variable to be equal to plus one for positive support or for positive samples and minus one for negative samples so now I think the idea is clear so now XP can be any vector whose alpha P is different from zero and YI or YP is equal to one okay and xn is any is associated with can be established by any alpha n that is different from zero and yn for which yn is equal to minus one so this is how i can find xn and xp and then to get the distance d plus this distance here i can just dot product w with um, XP and the D minus can be obtained by dot product it can be dot product of W with XN okay and now my C is equal to W or half W um, dotted with XP plus W dotted with XN and at the end I say well D is equal to minus that minus C or rather B okay so this is how I get the value of B I hope it was clear so this is of course just one way to identify the uh, distance D plus and D minus there are of course other ways but I think this this method here is uh, will work fine and now I think that I talked about so far I talked about how to find the W and we found it and also we said that W depends upon alpha I we need to find alpha I and alpha I depends upon 
maximizing this dual Lagrangian and after that when we get the W using this alpha I we can easily compute B by using the dot product that I just explained here.